Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lana. And it's your boy, Stanley. All right, coming in with this week's Queen Sugar, it will be Season 4, Episode 6, Eight. By the Spit. And on this channel, we're going to do something that we've never done before. Eight. We're going to premiere this video. So if you are watching this video on today, which is July the 25th, and the first time that this will air, it will air as a premiere. So anybody yeah. that's in the premiere right now, go ahead and hit a thumbs up and just wave at us. Say, hey, we here, we yeah. here, we here. And we will be down in those comments interacting with you all during the premiere. If you are checking this out after the premiere, then go ahead and do what you always do. Like, comment, subscribe. Do your comments down in there. And like we always do, if we don't comment back, then at least you'll get a heart from us. We will never ignore you over here on this channel. Hey. So this week, I'm really not understanding why it didn't come on last week. If y'all know that information, yeah. go ahead and drop that down below. Because I was yeah. really waiting for something like the World Series or something crazy yeah. to pop off last week. That cause I Maybe was, they just needed a break. They could have. Uh -huh. I needed a break last week. Yeah. We don't watch TV like that, so if something did pop off last week, y'all would let us know down below. Yeah. So last week, we saw that Nova's friend, I call her the Molesta, she came into town and she basically invited herself on Nova's tour. So everybody down in the comments last week was like, something is not right about this chick. And I didn't even like the whole relationship to begin with because the way it came about to me was very... Yeah, y'all know how I felt about that. Yeah, creepy. So, yeah, and their relationship is so, like, them together just looks wrong. It just looks so rough and rugged and is not sens- Okay. Her well, relationship gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so now that this lady is on this tour, she's acting as if she's trying to give Nova a leg up in the- you know, because she's been through mm -hmm. this before, so she knows where to shake and move. She knows how to make things happen. Well, she's doing these things, but we see that she's doing these things for herself Self. as well. Exactly. So every time Nova gets an opportunity to speak about herself or, you know, these things and that things, here she is interjecting herself. Mm -hmm. And basically, she's interviewing for new opportunities while Nova is out here on this book tour. And there came a time where Nova was doing an interview, right? And the guy was like, you know, now that your si or your sister has uh, put our name in the hat to run for city council, do you know? Do you think that your activism has rubbed off on her? Now, Nova didn't know none of this skit. Yeah. Because, you know, she ain't talking to nobody. And nope. she's not being honest about how this book is affecting her family. Even when yeah. everybody's asking her the questions. She's, she's talking around it. Yeah. Or Octavia will come in like this and she'll divert yeah. the question. Well, this is what she did once again. Octavia was like, because Nova did get stuck. Don't get it twisted. Nova was like, you know, uh, uh, uh. And she said, you know what? As black women, <laughs> you know, we we have the ability to glean off each other. Just yeah. like black she, girl magic. Yeah. She was like, just like, you know, she gleaned off of me. You know, that her sister's able to glean off of her. You know, it's just one big collective family. I said, Octavia, you are doing the most with the least. Well, Octavia's whole thing is basically, I've groomed you. Yeah. I've made you what you are. And now it's your time to repay me. And if you don't, I can break you. I, I, I was like... I can't, I can't deal with people like I that. I can't either. Yeah, that's why I have a hard time letting somebody help me out. Because people have a way that when they help you and you get ahead, they want you to reach back and pull that. Which I don't have no problem with that. I don't either. I don't have no problem supporting, rewarding, acknowledging the people who have helped me. But if you try to use that skit to, to manipulate me, head? man, yeah, I'm done with you. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually, Nova came to herself. And as much as I don't like Nova, I'm so glad that she kicked this girl out of her camp. Because there yeah. came a time where Nova was, um, she got a phone call that said that she was being shortlisted for a book award. And Octavia was acting like she was very happy for Nova. But when she went to embrace her after Nova was excited, I mean, because... Yeah. No. She, she made, had this she's sinister look. On. Like, she on her. And she was like, are you sure you're ready for this? You're not yeah. ready for this type of thing. And then they were even at this... Um, this social event, I don't know if it was a meet and greet or whatever it was, but it was a social event. 
And this lady was like, oh, I need to get over there and talk to Nova. She was like, I have this opportunity on the books that I think she would be perfect for. And Octavia was like, you know Nova is not qualified for that. Hold hmm. on. Hold How are you going to tell her what she ain't qualified for? I'm not here for Nova, but right is right and wrong is wrong. Yeah. And oh, um, Nova overheard that. So Nova, she checked her about it and she was like, wait a minute. And then the girl, this was the funny part. She said, you know what? Where I'm going and the vision I have for this is more forward. Yeah. So you could actually write the forward for her. I was like, you know what? <laughs> we took her all the way down to writing the forward for Nova. Okay. But you know what? The problem really probably is that Octo Octavia, whatever her name is, uh, she's not relevant no more. So yeah. she's trying to get re-relevant, if that's a word. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to come back up off of Nova's fame right now mm -hmm. because she ain't in the spotlight. But she like that 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 older person that's that she's sixty years old still trying to be cool in the club. Oh gosh! You walk over there with your Tims and your baggy jeans on, and you know. But a whole linen suit on. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Whole linen you try Tims. Not saying that you can't be sixty and go to the club, but you understand, you know, it's a different swag about you when you get older. So she's trying to be that person she was twenty years ago. No, it's time to let Nova shine, even though it's wrong. Yeah. The way that she's shining. But it's time to let her shine and take a step back and let her rise. Right? Mm -hmm. So now that um, Nova has confronted Octavia, she basically told Octavia, you know, listen, I've outgrown you. And at this point, I don't mm -hmm. owe you anything. I'll always be forever indebted to you. Yeah. And but I don't you owe you nothing. That. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's time for me to move on. And that's what a good mentor is. They will allow you to outgrow them. That's right. That's their job. If a mentor always wants to keep you a step below them, get rid of them. Yeah. They trying to get control you at that them. point. So a good mentor or a good trainer will train you or mentor you out, out of, of their, their life. life. Yep. Because at this point, we're dealing with codependency here. Exactly. And who has time for that? Not me. Not mine. Okay, let's move on over to Blue. Okay. So, evidently, the whole therapy conversation has come up. And Dollar and Ralph Angel are supposed to get Blue into some kind of therapy. But Ralph Angel is supposed to be taking the lead on this, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, Ralph Angel, as any typical black person is, <laughs> they're very hesitant about talking to a professional about professional appropriate conversations. Yeah. This is something that is needed for Blue right now. Mm -hmm. Blue isn't going to school. He took the day off. He's just out there. He's he's in his own world. We see Kenya is back, the fake Kenya. Yeah. Because y'all know that I ain't got over. Somebody don't get, in the don't comments. Get, don't get you started on yeah, that one. Somebody <laughs> in the comments told me I needed to get over Kenya. I said, I'm not going to get over Kenya <laughs> just like I'm not going to get over Mikey Ealy dropping them kids out the window. I ain't never going to get over it. So y'all will have to deal with it. every time we talk about Kenya, I'm going to get triggered by it. Because Kenya ain't did skit and Blue ain't did skit for her to take that boy's maybe, dog. Maybe you need to talk to that counselor too. Man. I'll do it because I don't have a problem <laughs> talking to therapists. Shoot. So, um, eventually, Ralph Angel did make the appointment and the lady came over and she basically told him, listen, because Blue actually didn't want to open up and he didn't want to speak to her. So, she said, let Kenya tell me mm -hmm. what's going on with you. So, he did. And she told Ralph Angel and Dollar said, Blue is really on target. For what happened to him, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. He's going to go through this and he's going to process it. You're going to see different things. But here's the thing that tripped me out. It seemed like the therapy was more needed for the parents at this point. Mm -hmm. Because she's asked them, she said, I want you all to do some homework and I want you all to write down what are your future plans for Blue? What does the future with Blue look, look like? like? Mm -hmm. And Dollar just, she was on it. Like she had a vision and she started making it plain like the Bible says she was writing it down. Yeah. And Ralph Angel was looking like he wanted to copy off of her paper. Like he didn't have any of that. And it reminded me of so many of our black brothers. And I'm not trying to throw y'all under the bus, but I'm trying to keep it real with you all. And I yeah. praise God for my husband because... He's so different. Most black men don't have a vision for the future. And even Ralph Angel said that. He said that his vision is to get through today. today. Uh -huh. 
and hopefully survive tomorrow. And that's as far as it goes. Now, now I ain't gonna lie, I used to be that brother. Oh, all of us used but, to be that. But that that kind of was from my upbringing. It's like, okay, you you live for the day, but hope for tomorrow, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of backwards. So that alleviate goal setting, visions, and stuff like that. Work. So yeah, yeah, work. So yeah, I got tired of being the person that all I do is get up every day and go to work and come back home, eat, sleep, and do the same thing all over again. Yeah, so I had to grow into that. So that's yeah. a good life lesson that opened that up those out there, man. That was a very good life lesson. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that it kind of, you know, made Ralph Angel start thinking like, yeah, I have this this whole human being that I'm responsible for. Yeah. And, and I, I don't have, have a, a, a vision or a plan yeah. for the rest of his life. What does his life look like with me? Yeah. What does his what his life look like with his mom? Mm -hmm. And that's a part of co-parenting too. Exactly. And then those visions need to be able to merge. So I thought that was really good. Yeah. And, I, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Oh yeah. And a lot of us wonder why we had a stage in our life. I'm like, how in the world did I end up where I'm at right now? It's because you didn't have a plan. Mm -hmm. No plan, you end up nowhere. And the definition of insanity is doing the same, same thing, thing over and over, hoping for a different result. Exactly. That's insanity. Exactly. So I just want to give you your big ups that we don't have that in this household. Like, this is such a visionary that he gets on my nerves sometimes, to be honest with you. I'm like, what? What? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait. You? What? Now, now, trust me. I got a whole lot of input and a whole lot of say, so I ain't that type of wife. Just go with the flow. Now, y'all should have So maybe one day we might talk to them about what the, what the ultimate vision is. So we don't right. think we think we both kidding. That's for another time. We'll yeah. let y'all know. We got to make sure we're in a good enough space in that so that you don't have people that don't want it to be happening. To yeah. Come in Cause sometimes you can't tell everybody, can't tell everybody your what you're doing. They're like, nah, you can't do that. Yeah, ain't going to happen. I'm going to let you know we're planning. It. It's going to happen. And it is happening, Mike. Yeah. So eventually, as the storyline progressed with Blue, Ralph Angel, and Dala, they're sitting down and Blue is actually doing something with animals. I don't know what kind of book he's in, but he's talking about animals that talk and different stuff like that. And Ralph Angel was like, you know, all animals, you know, they talk just in a different way. They communicate. And then he gets to the point where he's talking about the um, the penguins and the penguins, how the mother would lay the egg and she would go on and do what she needs to do. But the father would nurture the egg, make sure that it's safe and warm. Yeah. And Blue was like, Pop, that's how you do me. You make sure that I'm safe, safe. Mm -hmm. and you make sure that I'm warm. I was like, boy, you was better like, that go was good. Ahead. That was good. So he still, nothing has changed for him. Yeah. That's his daddy. And so I thought that was real good. So now Ralph Angel is starting to see some visions. Yeah. And he actually started writing some things on his paper. I don't know what they were because I yeah. refuse to keep rewinding back, <laughs> trying to figure out what this is. If I could say anything critical about this show, and y'all, I've said it before, speak clearly. Or turn up the audio. Turn up the audio. Yeah. And when you have something that you want us to see, Bring that thing in so we can see it. Mm -hmm. Because people like me, not I'm not gonna keep I'm yeah. not gonna keep going back and forth with y'all. <laughs> I'm living my best life over yeah. here. Okay, Charlie. So of course, Charlie, see this is my opinion. Charlie, if she had any other choice, she would not be running for city council. So yeah. now she's having to do something to get the result that she needs, right? So she went ahead, put her name in the hat, mm -hmm. but now she has to play catch up and she has to hit the ground running like never before because she just came from out of nowhere with this, right? Yep. So she opened up and she started a cam um, campaign headquarters and you have people from the community coming over and they're starting to volunteer and help. And we see this little cute older lady named, what was her name, Genevieve? Gen Genevieve? Yeah, something like that. So Genevieve, you can tell that Mr. Prosper, he's he's either always had his eye on her mm -hmm. or they had some dipping going on back in the day. I'm not really sure which one it he is. He lit up like a Christmas tree boy. But he <laughs> is feeling uh -huh. Miss G, honey. Uh -huh. And Miss G is feeling him. Is feeling her. So Mr. Prosper, she said, come on in and make me prosper Russ. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So they're sitting down together and they're just doing small talk. They're stuffing envelopes and stuff like that for Charlie and whatnot. 
And Mr. Prosper looks at her, but it's like, you know what? You know, we missed the lunch hour and all that stuff. But tonight, I plan on cooking out on the grill. Yeah, hey, I, I got some steaks, man. I got man. Me some steaks. <laughs> I was like, can y'all even eat steaks? How, how good them dentures is in? They gonna but get you. I don't care. They gonna get you. I don't care. My mama got dentures, so I know she can't eat no steaks. God, she, said, she said, huh, free steak? She's, I'm going to bring the wine. I said, <laughs> don't y'all be over there having no AARP sex yeah, over there. Uh-huh. AARP, Netflix, and chill. I said. <laughs> <laughs> nah, ain't no Netflix. They don't even know about Netflix. Yes, yeah, they know about Netflix. Uh -huh. And when you want something, you know about everything you can think of. But don't ask them to go online and pay a bill, though. I don't know nothing or about that. Or send a text message. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Mm, I don't deal with that. I don't trust none of that. Uh-uh. <laughs> but, but the same people that would take a daggone um, $20 bill, wrap it up in some notebook paper, and put it in an envelope, and, and send it in the mail. mail. Have y'all had anybody send um, cash money to you in the mail? Go ahead and put that in the comments. Yeah. We have somebody up until last year that would do this, and we said, would you no, please no. Mm. stop it? Everybody knows what that is. Exactly. I said, all right. So while we're at the campaign headquarters, you know, um, Romero is there. We just got some people that's, you know, making things um, shake and move over there. And all of a sudden, a brick Come comes through, through the, window. the window. Now, Charlie is like, hold on, hold on. I know this is what I said I wanted to do. But at this point, it looks like that I'm putting everybody's life in jeopardy. Look at Mr. Prosper and Miss G over there. They could have got hit by a brick. Mm -hmm. So Romero was like, you know what, Charlie? This is what right. you signed up for. Yeah, this is why you want it. It basically comes with the turf. You should know. It's almost like a confirmation that let the games begin. Yeah, you, exactly. You a threat. Yeah. I mean, why would why would they even do that if you want a threat? Yeah. Yeah. So Romero told her and she said, Listen, you have to go. This remind me of something. I gotta I gotta tell it in a minute. <laughs> you have to go and get the big fish. And the big fish is Pastor Martinez. And basically See, we used to be in the, in the church sector, so we know how all this works. If you get the pasta, you got the fish. You got the flock. Oh, exactly. So you go after the big fish, and the rest of them will follow. Mm -hmm. Just like when these elected officials, yep. when they get ready to run for something, the first thing they want to do is come, come to, to your the, church, come to the church. Yep. and take five minutes of your time. Yep, just before offering. So that you can vote for their hard parts, and you don't yep. see their hard yeah. parts as no ever hope. again. Nope. Yeah. So... He said, you know what, I'm going to do something for you. Basically, he had a plan to integrate her into the Hispanic world. I said, mm. Now, one thing I love about my Hispanic brothers and sisters, they ain't taken to you just because. Yeah, uh-huh. Just like you gotta us prove, black. You got to you prove, prove yourself. yourself. You got to prove yourself. Just like yeah. us black people, we just not going to take to you just because you show up. Yeah, you show up talking What's you going to change intentions? the world and be like, huh? Say we we know twenty other people who came here and said the same thing. What you want? And them ninjas is gone. So we get over there, and it's more of like a laid back, casual family type of Hispanic community event, kind of like what our neighbor do down the street, a a summer. Yeah, you know, all are welcome. We just ain't never been yet. Yeah, and. Charlie goes over there to introduce herself to Pastor Martinez, and he already knows who she is. But he ain't taking well to her, and he's letting her know in a nice, classy-based way, I'm not here for the bullshit, and I'm not here to be your opportunity mm -hmm. to get voters over here. I ain't never seen you over here. Yeah. What is it that you want? And Charlie was like, basically, she was like, oh, okay, so this is going to be a little harder than I thought it <laughs> thought was going to be. She thought because it was the pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the pastor, the man of God. They're going to let me in easy, huh? Not him. No, no. Uh -huh. So he was like, basically, in so many words, don't use me as your golden ticket to win. Yep. What you doing over here on these, in these pots? He said, I've never seen you, you on these never seen you over before. Here. So she basically. Said, who sent you? <laughs> <laughs> so she basically, you know, she said, you know what? Let's go ahead and start over. I have been fighting so much for my people on my side of St. Joe. Trying to fight for access to the stuff that's already ours mm -hmm. in the first place in the first place and he said something so powerful i said "Ooh, this brings a lot of stuff into perspective today he said while you're fighting for it we are maintaining it 
Yeah, cause she said, cause she said, why Ooh. we got, why we got to keep on fighting for what That's already what, what, ours, what already ours, what we built. That he said, and yeah. the whole while y'all fighting, we are maintaining, maintaining, doing a job and that y'all don't want to do. And they're cashing the checks and getting rich. Yep. And I said, shoot, yep. it's not that we don't know this, but we will be a powerful, powerful. Yeah, if we, we could bring we could, that thing together. together. Yeah. A divide and conquer keeps us separate. Yeah. If we come together in unity. Yeah, we can get done anything we need to get done. Because at the end of the day, we're all minorities. Exactly. They see brown people. Mm -hmm. And that's what Pastor Martinez was like. Listen, basically, when you come into your own, don't forget about us and don't use us to do the things that you don't want to do, mm -hmm. but still leave us out there doing what you refuse to do. Mm -hmm. We want our part too. We want to be treated fair as well. So, Ava and them is sending a message. Y'all better, y'all better look out for y'all um, Hispanic brothers and sisters, especially now. Yeah. Because there was a time where we were being treated just like them. Not saying we're not now. Yeah. But the focus is now on them. them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So y'all better look out for them. And I saw this thing on the news the other day. Let me know if y'all saw this where ICE was trying to get a Hispanic family and their whole neighborhood formed a human chain around their vehicle so that ICE couldn't get them. Wow. Now, granted, they are here illegally and I don't agree with any of that. I really don't. I believe that if you had your time to get your skit straight, get, get your, your skit, skit straight. straight. Yeah. Um, but that's the power of unity. He's ours. You can't touch that. Exactly. That's what they used to do back in the day. But I don't know why they so hard on, on them because there's a whole lot of stuff over here that we got going on that's illegal right up in the government system. But, not but, but this, ain't a, this ain't a political <laughs> channel, channel, so we ain't going to go there. But, but anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> so Charlie has it. She got it. That this... This is not gonna be easy. Yeah, we're gonna her. say go, Charlie. But I hope she win this time. I do. Well, I even because I don't want her to win the Kansas City and then lose at something else. That's always be the case. I hear to say that's the essence of this show. So we might as well just go ahead and wait for it. But if she lose, don't let it be immediately. Right. You know, give us like about three, four, five, six episodes. You know, she just banging it out, man, changing stuff. Then, then maybe then. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. don't be like this episode. She win, and then before you get to the end of the episode, she lose. Yeah, she. That's fast. Yeah. So she went ahead. The announcement was made. They had a nice little little get together, little celebration and whatnot of her running and whatnot. So we'll like my husband said, we'll see how this goes. So let's turn our focus over there to Aunt by and all her Hollywood. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know how much more Hollywood can take. I don't know how much more. See, I'm different. I'm a female, but I'm built like a male. There are just some things that I'm just like, okay, enough's enough. If you're not going to do the work to make things happen, then why is, why are you? Why are we together? Right. Yeah. Why are we? Because it's always, it's always something. Yeah, and it's well, always gonna be something. something yeah, but, but it's like sh she want to shut him off every time something is wrong with her. Yeah, she shut him off and won't tell him why he shut off. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get this nasty part out the way. <laughs> they laying in the bed, right? And Hollywood was like, "Hold on, something ain't right. Something ain't right. Something ain't right, honey." And she said, it don't happen all, every time, Hollywood. I said, what you? The, the, huh? Huh? What you, what you, you didn't have to wash your sheets afterwards? Hold huh? on, what's going on? Yeah. Well, she, she, she's not, mm. And Hollywood said, this is different because I'm the one that usually has to keep up with you. I said, yeah, I said whoa. I said, What'd you say? So, so I know something's wrong. What'd you say? <laughs> that mountain lion got you climbing. Uh-huh. Huh? Like, I'm gonna have enough. Let, let me, me go. go. <laughs> let me go. Let me go. <laughs> said, let me go, girl. Stop playing. You play too much. <laughs> when you have somebody tell you you play too much, you know you don't got on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
she knows that at this point she needs to figure out what this thing is. Now I vibe. She already knew what it is, man. But I'm thinking that this next move was her to was maybe for her to say in her own mind, this thing ain't got me mentally bucked up the way I think it do. Maybe there is something going on with me. Other than that. Other than that. So she called the doctor. The doctor was like, listen, your levels are good. The medicine isn't doing anything. Has anything traumatic happened to you? She was like, yes, and God doing yes. yes. So now she has to face the fact that Jimmy Dale coming back is the trigger to all this skit. And it's so, it's not amazing, but it's a, it is amazing how no matter how long something happened to you, there could be one flicker and that thing will bring that thing back into your life like it never left and will mm -hmm. disrupt your entire Fine. world. If you don't deal with whatever's going on on the inside of you. That's, but that's why yeah. I am a, I'm one of those people. Deal Get with it. it. Deal, deal with, with it. Mm -hmm. it. And if you're not going to deal with it, don't take me on the road with you. Mm -hmm. I'm just like that. Because I'm like that. If I find something that I identify in myself that I don't like, that what my husband was like, you need to go see a cat. Yep. I don't have a problem. <laughs> I have one on speed dial if but I need that back in the day with some stuff you just you just but keep they it do in, that keep in the family sweep it underneath the rug but you forgot one day you got to pull the rug up and the dirt is still going to be there and that's what happened to her the rug you yeah. know I'm sorry that the rug got pulled up from your niece but the rug is eventually was going to come up now here's the thing I do have a level of sympathy and respect for the older generation because a lot of them, well, huh, most of them, they didn't have the resources to do so. They did the best they could. They did the best they what could they mm -hmm. and it was a learned behavior. Yeah. If most of them didn't go out in the field and chop it up with the men and you know, that was their way of therapy, then some of them turned to drugs, some of them started drinking, you know, yeah. as a way to get through. The yeah. females, and I even see that in my family, like a lot of the females in our family, they are so hard. Mm -hmm. Like they're they like I could not tell you like I used I have to make my grandmother hug me to this day she's very uncomfortable with it but I'll go and I'll just mm -hmm. uh, and she's like and she's saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to let you know get off me, get off me. <laughs> that's the way that they shielded their stuff from them and it became them it made them hard and even me I had church broke me I'm gonna tell you that's why it broke me because them older folk gonna gonna hug up on you whether you want them to or not and, and at squeeze, first I was squeeze, like squeeze your get off. off of me <laughs> and then I learned to soften up and embrace it and mm -hmm. you know stuff like that now I'm a hugger so if and, you ever meet me in public I'm gonna hug you and I would love for the for the, the gap to be bridged because you know with our generation the generation that's ahead of us and the older generation is a lot of head button it is. And I think I think it really can be repaired because we be repaired because we need the wisdom. We do. We need the wisdom. But what actually gets muddied up is we get come at as if we don't know nothing, we don't know nothing and judgmental so as if you never did it before. Or like like I'll pass you like you used to be in the back of the student baker having sex with your boyfriend and girlfriend and now these kids are doing the same thing and all of a sudden and they going to hell though. Yeah, they going to hell and you want to judge them. But yeah, and then us, we think we know it all sometimes. We do. Yeah, so we do. We get a little bullheaded sometimes, but I think if we come together with with our charisma and our energy and the that fight that we up. had in your wisdom, man, we, we could. got it. Yeah. So if you come at us and be like, hey, you know what? Man, I used to do this. I used to do that. But let me help you. I'm going to help you get through that and give you the wisdom on how to get past that with your money, mm -hmm. uh, with job, business, whatever. Whatever you struggle with. Yeah, yeah, because whatever. they had stickability yeah. back then. Strength. Sometimes not good stickability. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we need that in our generation. But... Like we say, you got to come right. At the same time, we got to come right at y'all, too. Exactly. But most of the time, we come wrong at y'all because y'all come at us wrong. Yeah, because we're in the generation, you get respect when you give it. Yeah. So a lot of us is like, oh, you don't speak to me, I ain't speaking to you. Now, I'm yeah. not like that. But even like younger kids now, kids will walk in your house. And don't even speak. And won't even speak to you in your house. Yep. First of all, that's, that's, that's upbringing to begin with. But yeah. that's that generation we're in now. Kids will walk past you and don't 
won't hold the door for you, won't do none of that. But and you can't get offended by it. Exactly. It's it's the generational thing. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to start massaging that thing when you see mm -hmm. it. You know, hold the door for them. Be like, hey, come on through this door, baby. Come on. Yeah, well, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> like I had to tell the guy one day at the cash register at, <laughs> at Target. He acted like he didn't want to speak to me, and I spoke to him twice. Mm. I said, I didn't sleep with you last night. <laughs> <laughs> and he just bust out laughing. He said, you know what? I'm so sorry. I had a bad day. I said, it's cool to have bad days, but honey, I said, speaking to you will make you feel a whole lot better. Yeah. And he said, you know, I feel better already. Yeah. And to balance it out, not all of y'all that way. And not all of us are that way. 95% of y'all. But there's a lot of us that, yeah. 95% of y'all are. Yeah. <laughs> so stop. some of y'all might get in the comments and try to, you know, defend your position. But that's cool. That's, that's cool. That's that's cool. That's what make us a family. We don't always yeah. agree. Yeah, we always agree. Yeah. We we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> Respectfully. But we, we still, we still love man. each other, don't we? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Sometimes. So, <clears throat> now that Avi has to face the music, she's sitting at home, and Hollywood comes home with a motorcycle. I mean, he's just vested up. Uh-huh. He's excited, and I know what he's doing. Yeah. He's trying to create some excitement, something different, yeah. something that she can get in on as well, get her mind off of it and get back in the moment. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I know you didn't go out there and buy yourself no. And then no, she said, no, you know what? What's that, death machines? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so, and I'm sorry, I'm clapping my God doing legs. I just realized and y'all can hear everything in this new equipment. So I apologize right off the bat. <laughs> um, she quickly turned to, you know what, Hollywood, we need to talk. I talked to my doctor. The medicine ain't it. My lupus, that ain't, ain't it. it. It's Jimmy Dale. That thing got me so mentally bucked up right now. I don't yeah. know if I'm coming or I'm going. And she said the death, the stake in his heart. It was a stake in my heart and she didn't even say it to me. Yeah. She said, I'm gonna need some space. He said, then he went on and reminded himself of the vow that he took. But it just ain't feel right, y'all. It mm -hmm. did not feel yeah, and right. He did, yeah, and he did look. But you know what? You know what it looked like to me? It was like it's it was his ex wife all over again without the drug addiction. Was she into the drugs or was she well, just mentally ill? Well, whatever. I can't remember. Yeah, I'm um, yeah. He had to take care of his ex wife and now he had to take care of his current wife. So I don't even know if it's called taking care of her because she wants to be alone. Like she wants to do what's what's the word? Uh he wants to put her He always he once again he has to put himself to the side so that she can be what she wanna be at this time. I, I don't know y'all. I'm like how How much more can you How take? much can this good man with good money, mm -hmm. with good intentions. Made a lot of sacrifices. With, from what I just heard, good mm, with no chum. Like the mm -hmm. old folks say, you got no chum. Uh-huh. No baby mama drama. How long this man going to stay around? Mm-hmm. And wait for you. To get yourself together. To deal. Yeah. With your past. Or not necessarily, I'm going to take that back. Not get yourself together, but he wants to be a partner to help you get through it. And you won't let him. But you, but you won't shut him out. Because I'm like, alone, what does that, what what does that, that, that mean? What does that look like? Are you yeah. going to go get help? Do you want him to go stay at the hotel for the next six months? What? Are you moving out? Which yeah. I seriously doubt. Yeah, so what does so, that look like? Yeah, like, what, what's the plan for you to be alone? Yeah. Just to soak in it? Because that's not going to help. That's not going to help. That's going to make it worse. That's going to make it, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I need to know what this alone looks like. And then maybe I can talk to Hollywood and tell him to hold on just a little while longer. Mm -hmm. But if that just being alone just means that I'm going to sit in the house and in the dark and bake my pies, that's not going to rock. Nah, that's not going to rock for me. Because what you got going on, yeah, you going to need Ayala, <laughs> the teacup, the spoon, you going to need the ancestors, all of that. You going to need Jesus. <laughs> All of that so, to yeah. to fix this. This man did some skit. Yeah, so I, I, that's why I said I was like, how long he gonna he gonna stick around? Cause yeah, I could tell he was hurt. Yeah, yeah. but it didn't feel right this time, y'all. It just felt like okay. He had a look in his face was like, I don't know if I'm gonna deal with this no more. Yeah, 
I'm not going to say nothing right now. I'm just going to process it for a little while. Because you remember earlier in the episode, he was like, he was talking to Ralph Angel. He said, hey, you ever felt like that your past is co- your your past is coming in, trying to swallow up your future? Like it's a bad cold right yeah, now? Yeah, like a bad cold that won't go away. Woo! He's like, whoa! Now, Ralph Angel can definitely understand what he's talking about yep. in another aspect. But, mm-hmm. yeah, so, I don't yeah. know, y'all. So it seems like Vi's past yeah. is coming in and might swallow up their yeah. future, man. And I can only speak for that because I'm just, like I said, I'm built differently. Like, I'm one of those very intolerant people. Like, if you ain't willing to put in the work, what we doing? Mm-hmm. I, I'm not, I'm not, look, I am not my ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a dealer. <laughs> like, for real. I ain't got no, I ain't got this kind of time. I got gray hairs that's coming naturally. I don't need Say I'm too old for this. I don't need any enhancements to make them pop up any more than what they already are naturally. So, that's really all I got. Um, yeah. It wasn't a lot going on in this episode, but it was a lot to think about. Yeah, a lot. Episode. A lot to process. Yeah. So, so yeah. Y'all so. keep Hollywood and unbind your prayers, man. Yeah. Even Stella said that mess last week. He said, I don't know, man. I don't know. Somebody in the comments said they wanted unbind and Uncle Hollywood to break up. I almost I almost deleted you, man. Yeah, I don't want to break up, man. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, you know, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, you better leave it. Like, um, like Funky Dineva said, he's a good man, Savannah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's all I got straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty South. Two up, two down. Holla. Holla.